Well, welcome to The Journey. My name is Kevin Polky, and I am the host of The Journey. And as we venture into, um, into a new month, um, we are going into the month of May. And it, it's an interesting thing. Um, 50, 60 years ago, there was a movement toward designating certain months to represent uh, certain issues that we want to have some increased public awareness. And since that time period, we have added uh, a month may uh, represent a couple different uh, topics or different issues. Uh, in 1959, or no, I'm sorry, 1949, um, this month of May was designated as mental health awareness. Um, the primary purpose at that time was to look at uh, how do we raise awareness, how do we educate individuals on uh, mental illness and their recovery from mental illness. And I think, you know, that was definitely, so, you know, very important you know, maybe even up till just the most recent uh, few years where there still was this stigma. And for some, some, some would say and argue that there still is stigma, and I would agree with that, but there definitely has been an increase in awareness about seeking, uh, seeking out assistance through either treatment or therapy or counseling than any time that I remember in my career. Now, when I first started working um, in the field of, of counseling and different forms of counseling, but but mental health as a whole, uh, it very much was uh, you, you, there was something wrong. And that's why you were going to a counselor, going to a psychiatrist or going to the hospital that there was something wrong and maybe even be translated that there's something wrong with with you i was very fortunate that in my career i was trained first as a in psychology and then later in social work and that framework was extremely beneficial for me because instead of looking at the problem being within the person social workers, we were trained that it was more about the interaction between the person within the environment, that instead of there being something fundamentally wrong with a person who was demonstrating or displaying symptoms, or something was wrong with the environment, it would have whatever that environment might be, it was looked at that possibly there would be a mismatch between the person and the environment that they found themselves in. And that mismatch was how we would then come to view and work with um, the interaction or the transaction between the person and the environment or the person within another person. As I got into clinical work, we would look at what are some other things, what are different aspects of the system in which the person um, was living, and then look at what might be happening or influencing this person in the different subsystems within the person's life. So I started off as a school social worker, and the district as a whole would be considered a system, and there was each school, in this particular case, there was eight grade schools there was one um, kindergarten, preschool, there was a junior high and a high school. So there was 11 different schools, which could be, consider, could be considered a subsystem within the system of the district. But then within each school, there was subsystems as well. The cafeteria worker, the hallway monitors, the different types of classroom, and based on subject matter, based on grade levels. So you can see that there would be all these different subsystems which were having to work together 
and interact um, together to impact a student's experience. So all of this to say that as we have begin navigating through uh, this month of May and we're transitioning from just to focus on prior, just to focus on how to break the stigma around mental illness, how do we transition transition into looking at mental wellness or mental health? We talk a lot on the journey about what are you doing to improve uh, your mental well-being and your mental health and your emotional health and your spiritual health as much as it is popular to uh, to work on improving your physical health. We know that many times the things that we can do to improve our physical health has an impact on our, our mental and emotional health as well. Proper nutrition for us, uh, movement and exercise, uh, a proper amount of sleep and hydration. These are all things that can influence uh, to make sure that this, our bodies, this machine runs efficiently. But what are those things that we can also do to improve our mental and emotional health? And as we've talked numerous times, it's about first starts with awareness. Who is and what makes Kevin tick in 2023 may very well be different than in 2013 or 2003 or 1993. What is that Kevin is aware about today? What are the demands that are, are on Kevin today? And what do I need to be need to do mentally and emotionally, physically and spiritually to opt to, to um, operate at that optimal level. And I know for me, as much as I enjoy being around people, which would then qualify me for being a, an extrovert, there is equally as much time do I enjoy, savor and embrace solitude. And that solitude when or in combination of nature allows me to even feel more grounded. And when I'm in that grounded space, that is where it ties into my spiritual connection. If I'm able to, during that time period, to journal, to read, while I'm able to be close to the earth and savoring the the sunlight, it will then allow me to have a better opportunity to get out of my thinking and see things from a broader perspective. A few years ago, uh, one of my counselors um, had gone through uh, uh, some struggles recovering from a surgery. And the surgery left scar tissue, which then she had problems with that, with the healing from that. During this time period, she wasn't able to work out. And she was restricted to limited amount of movement because of not only the, the recovering from the surgery that wouldn't heal and continue to get infected, as well as then later had uh, resulting in uh, spinal issues as well. When not being able to use movement and exercise, which was her go-to for self-care, she was resorted to being stationary. And she utilized her backyard and watching birds to be a way for her to be grounded. I reflected on that um, and thought of... Uh, of being my interest over the last half a year or so, maybe a little bit longer, where I now have multiple bird feeders outside of our patio window. Being able to try different seed and find out which seed works best for the birds in our area. The bird bath of being able to make sure that there is uh, moving water consistently available for for the birds 
watching these birds, watching the chipmunk or the squirrels as they interact with the feed and the water is another way for me to be grounded, um, looking forward to being able to sit outside and be in closer proximity to the feeders, um, which I've only been able to enjoy up to this point through, through the window of the winter. I came across just recently uh, the, the latest article uh, from Psychology Today that the very last page of, of this, this month's um, uh, episode or issue uh, talked about a lady who had been in um, chronic pain and had depression as a result of, of a surgery that did not, go, did not go well, reminding me of my counselor. That at one time, she found herself in a very depressed state seeing a yellow, what probably was a finch, outside of her window and followed that finch as it moved around her backyard. And that became a relationship with bird watching and a curiosity, which then led to grounding and being able to come out of her depression and recognizing that she wasn't alone and that there was some greater uh, greater part of her life and greater aspect of what was going on. In other words, for her, a tie into having a, a, a sign that God was with her. So when we think about May and it being Mental Health Awareness Month, I want us to think about what things can we do to be mindful? What things can we institute into our daily life and our weekly routines that we would intentionally have those moments for God as we understand them, to be tied to nature, to allow our thoughts to slow down and just be present, and then be curious and maybe for nature that's right outside your window. Let's see if we can use this month to focus on developing and enhancing that part of our being. As always, I appreciate you being here and look forward to being with you next week.